Today I'm going to be looking at another action camera. This is the DXG DVS 5K8. It's got a couple of little tricks, this one. I'll show you those during the course of the video. Comes in a very professional looking box. On the front of there tells you what kind of things it does. In the box itself, you can see in the clear plastic part at the top, there's two things in there. There's the camera and something that looks a little bit like a watch. I'll explain that, of course. Uh, those are the specs on the back. Press pause now if you want to read those, if you're that kind of person. But these ones on this side are enough for me. It's got 1080p 30 mode, 720p 60, an OLED display, 170 degree wide angle lens, and those things are included in the box. It also lets you do this. Now that's a time lapse function in this camera. Now we've seen these before, but this one has a particularly good version of it, which I'll explain to you, of course. So let's get the things out of the box, just have a look at them, uh, tip all the accessories out as well, and see what we've bought. Now, if we put the camera and the case to one side for a minute, the other things inside the box are an HDMI A2 mini B lead, a USB A to micro B lead, some Velcro wrist straps, some plastic sticky back mounts, some anti fog sheets for the case to stop it fogging up, a USB charger and international adapter, and a piece of string to stop the camera falling off things. The instructions that come with this camera are particularly good. There's a nice, clear, fully detailed little instruction booklet. There's a quick start sheet, which is double sided. It has all the information that you need to get going. And then there's some software as well, which you can install on your computer if you don't have anything to edit video. Now let's take a look at the camera itself. Well, the lens is right in the middle on this camera rather than to one side like most action cameras. There's a speaker next to it on the front there. On the bottom, that tiny little pinprick thing, that's the microphone hole. Now, if we just turn it around and have a look on the top, the whole operation of the camera is controlled with these two buttons at the left and the right, and then in between those is a nice clear OLED screen. I'll show you that in a moment. Now, on this side, we've got a microphone in, which is a two and a half millimeter socket, as well as the USB plug there. This is the HDMI out. And that's where your micro SD card goes in, which you'll have to supply yourself. On the bottom, there's no mounting. There's no tripod hole, which is a bit disappointing. It's always nice to have one of those. There's the battery that's inside the camera. Of course, you can take that out and uh, have spares of those if you want, if you know how to get one of those. Now, let's turn it on and have a look. Now, the first thing that should smack you in the face is how bright and sharp that tiny OLED screen is. It's very clear and easy to understand what's going on. To start with, we're in video mode. Uh, we'll press this button here, which is the power button again, takes you into photo mode, then 10 photo burst mode, time lapse mode, countdown timer mode for taking self shots and then into the setup menu and that's it now the reason i needed to show you that is because that's everything it does there's nothing else hidden in there so if you're going to ask me any questions about does it do this that and the other i've put some things on the screen now i think people might ask it doesn't do any of those and in fact it doesn't do anything that i'm not showing you in this video but let's show you what it does do so press the button on the right it starts recording that nice big counter starts counting up on the screen there you can see that easily but as well as that you've got these leds flashing there's one on the top there there's one on the front there which is nice and bright there's another one on the bottom and then finally there's one on the back so it's pretty well covered when it comes to leds now i'll just stop it recording and then take you into the setup menus because that shows you everything that you can configure on this camera now there's two kinds of setup menus there's setup and more we'll start on the left in the setup one this is where you select things like the video resolution you've got 1080p 30 960p 30 or 720p 60. Very clear, easy to understand. Field of view. Now you've got ultra or wide. This only affects photos and 720p mode. 1080p mode has a fixed field of view. Now, perhaps the most interesting thing to me about this camera is its time-lapse mode. Notice it says lapse at the bottom of the screen there to tell you what you're in, so you don't have to memorize the icons. Now, you can take a frame of video every one seconds, three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds. And that's a frame of 1080p video. 
Now next, you can have the uh, camera have its orientation up or down. So basically it'll flip the video. You can delete files off the camera and then that last one takes you back to the previous menu. Now we'll just have a look at the other setup menu and this is the remainder of the things that we can change. You can have the on-screen display, the thing we're looking at now, you can flip that up or down depending on which way you're holding the camera up. You can have the LEDs, the flashing red LEDs on or off on this camera. You can change the brightness of the on-screen display that we're looking at now. This is medium brightness. You can have the beat volume go up and down, how long the camera takes before it shuts down when it's doing nothing. You can have all those different times there, or you can just have it stay on forever until the battery runs down, of course. And then that's where you change the time and date. Very clear, easy to understand, of course. RF, that's how you connect it to the watch type accessory. I'll show you that in a moment. That's how you reset everything to default, and that's how you get out of the menu again. So that's everything on the camera. Now, I'll just show you what each of those record modes looks like. Well, we've already seen what it looks like when it's recording video. You get this nice big timer counting up on the screen. So let's go into the photo mode. So here's a photo. Right, now let's try a 10 photo burst. Notice how quickly you can do that and how quickly it's ready to take another 10 frames, which is particularly good. Next one along, time lapse. So let's start that recording now. Now I've got one frame every second here, but you can see it's counting up at the top in time and it's counting frames at the bottom there. The time lapse mode on this camera is particularly good. I'll explain why that is later on, but we'll move on now. Just the last thing to show you the 10 second countdown timer, which works like any normal compact camera. You press the shutter, the lights flash quicker and quicker until eventually it takes a picture of you. And that's it. Now let's just have a look at this remote control thing that looks a little bit like a watch, but obviously it's just got these two buttons on the front, one for taking photos and one for taking video. Now it won't switch the camera on. You have to do that yourself, of course, which is rather obvious. But once the camera's on, it's ready to receive instructions from the remote control. So we'll press the bottom button here, which as you can see, has started the camera recording video by the light flashing on it. Press the button again, the camera stops. Press the top one, it takes a single photo. Now, one thing I'll just show you here is uh, on the watch itself, you can tell when the camera's recording, even if it's a long way away. Now, you've got the lights on the camera, of course, but you've also got lights on the watch. You can see on the left there, that green one's flashing to say that the camera is currently recording. Now, just to demonstrate what happens if the camera is off or out of range, if you press the bottom button, you can see I've got a red light flashing on the right of the remote control to show that the camera cannot be um, transmitted to for whatever reason. Now, the case also comes with this little uh, lens cap, which has a mirror in it, which presumably helps you to frame things, but also stops the uh, lens getting scratched on the front of that case. Now we'll just get the other things out here to show you how it all fits together. The case itself has one of those sort of doors on the top that you have to move a little latch to one side and then it just uh, folds open. Now of course we've got the orange ring around the back there which will make it waterproof, but that door can be taken off quite easily, just removed like that and then replaced with the other door and the reason you might want to do that, this door has holes in the back of it so that sound can get inside, whereas rather obviously the other one doesn't. They've both got that same bit of sponge inside the back, but the orange door also has an extra little mount on the back of it as well, uh, which would mean that you could mount the case uh, in front of you, maybe on a chest mount. The lens on this is glass. And there's a little mounting system on the bottom there. I'll show you how that works. So we'll put the camera inside the case here. It fits in there nicely, it doesn't rattle around. Uh, close the clip on the top and we're all ready to go. Now on the front of the case there, you can see a little sort of magnifying bubble for that LED. Also across the top, we've got these two buttons here, which push through to the ones on the camera itself. The OLED display can also be seen through that hole in the clip. So it's been well thought out. Now that clip on the bottom there, you can see the strap holes on the left and right of it. So you could strap it to things, but also you've got this clip here, which is a little bit like the ones used with GoPros, which helps you to mount the camera to other things and also tilt 
tilt it it's tiltable so you clip it in there and if you unscrew that little bit to the left there you can tilt that little bit up and down get the camera pointing where you want which was useful in the front of my motorcycle uh, i've mounted this to my bike i'll show you that in a second now that clip there that's a flat one uh, the other one that came with it had a curve on it and that's what i put on the front of the bike there because it curves that part of my bike so that fitted it nicely now that just clips into there like that and obviously that's pretty much how you mount it to things there's a little loop in there so that that's where you detach that piece of string i showed you earlier on to get it out of here you push the piece of plastic down there's like a little springy clip there and then to get that one out same again another springy clip and it just pulls out like that now that means that this little piece of plastic i'm holding in my hand is one of the most important things in the box because if you lose this you can't use any of the other mounts Okay, so let's have a look at some sample footage from the camera. And remember, as always, you want to see the true quality, download some samples, because these on YouTube don't look as good. Now, the thing I need to mention about these as well is uh, the clips I'm showing you recording on my motorcycle, I've had to turn the sound right down, like it's about 5% or something now, because it was peaking out all over the place. That microphone is very sensitive, and I went out with the case with the holes in the back door because I thought it would record the engine sound. Now, it does when the bike is going slow or idling, but unfortunately, if I'm driving along like this, it's just too noisy for it. If we forget the sound for a moment the video quality is actually pretty decent here now it's the time of year now where the sun isn't quite in the right places and the brightness isn't exactly how i'd want it to be the camera does like nice bright conditions but overall it's doing a pretty decent job especially when it comes to recording in 1080p mode Right, let's get a look at those different modes now. So we're inside the Manchester Arndale here. Here's the 1080p mode. Look at the uh, field of view on this one especially, but also the sharpness. Look at the um, signs in the background there, the people. It's pretty clear, although a little bit dark perhaps. 720p60, which is what you're looking at now. This is the wide mode. You notice things get quite a bit softer, especially if you look at the shop signs and things and the, the people in the distance there. Quite sort of blurry in a way. Now this is 720p ultra mode. Doesn't look as soft because it's using the full frame of the image, whereas I think the other one was zoomed in towards the middle. But it's also um, 60 frames a second. You can't see that on YouTube, I'm afraid. You'll have to download clips to look at 720p 60 clips. Now, we're inside the print works here. Pretty dark in here. But look at what happens when I pan around. You'll see that the frame rates dropped right down here. Everything's got really pretty jerky. And it does that to keep the brightness up. So this isn't a camera for dark conditions at all. I wouldn't recommend using it in low light. However, outside, like you're looking at now, nice and clear and sharp especially now I've put the camera on a wall here so it's not moving around at all now when I am walking up here just have a listen to this sound that's coming from the street musicians I didn't expect that tiny microphone hole on the bottom of the camera to pick up so much sound. In fact, these people are too loud for it. It's a lot better when I start to walk away from them. Now in this shot I'm stood outside the town hall. It's a good demonstration of how clear and sharp the lens is on this camera. You can see from top to bottom, left to right, everything's nice and sharp, including the cobbles on the floor there. Now I've taken some photos with this camera. This is an example of one of those. You can see it uses a full frame of the sensor as well as records it in 4-3 ratio. The photos are okay. They're all in 5 megapixels, which is the only option you've got. But those are pretty sharp if you zoom in on them as I have have done here you can see that there's quite a bit of detail in there but photos are only half of the story one thing you can do with the photo mode is take burst mode which takes 10 photos in quick succession this is a demonstration of that now as you can see it's pretty quick here's another one 
but I'm sure you can think of some more interesting things to do than just capture cars going past or people walking. Now I'm crossing the road here, I'm just demonstrating what the camera looks like when you hold it in your hand and you walk. You notice there is no image stabilisation on this camera, but because it's got a nice wide angle lens, it does tend to compensate for that quite a bit, and it's nowhere near as bad as some cameras I've tested with poor CMOS wobble in them. This camera tends to cope quite well. Let's just have a look at the difference in the resolutions on this one again. So I'm stood here on a spot, anchored to the spot, recording in 10. 80p. Now remember, I don't have a viewfinder, so of course I pointed this one a little bit low. I could have done with pointing it up a little bit. But regardless, let's just have a look at the 720p 60 mode. This is that one now, set with the ultra wide angle on it. You can see you can see quite a bit more. Now, if there's any jerkiness in any of the 1080p modes or the 720p modes, remember that's not the camera, that's probably something to do with the editing or the compression or whatever. If you want to see the smooth, real motion of any of these clips, I suggest you download some from my blog. There's links in the video description. Now let's just take a look at that time-lapse mode. I mentioned earlier it was especially good in this camera and I'll explain why. The video you're looking at now is recorded at one frame every second. That's 60 times normal speed. Now, in all the other cameras I've tested that have a time-lapse or interval photography mode, they just record a load of JPEGs, a load of photos. You've got to combine those yourself into a video file if you want to play them back as a video. Well, not with this camera. What it does, it creates video frames every interval. And when you press stop, it combines those into a 1080p 30 H.264 video. No need to convert anything. It just comes straight out of the camera. Now let's test out the mic in socket on this. You can see it on the side there, it's a two and a half millimeter mic in. So I've used a stereo two and a half millimeter to three and a half millimeter converter and attached that to my lavalier mic. Right, so it doesn't seem likely that I'm going to be able to get out on the bike again. So what I've done, I've attached my lavalier microphone to the camera with a two and a half millimeter adapter. And I'm talking to you through that now. Um, also, I just thought it'd be a good idea to demonstrate it this way because unfortunately to use the microphone with the camera I'd have to drill a hole in the camera case if I was to attach it to my bike in any way because of course it needs the case to hold to the bike but also the microphone can't be plugged into the camera once it's in the case. So you're left with that same old situation where you've got to drill a hole in the case to where I get the microphone lead in there, which of course then stops it being waterproof. So it's all about compromises this. So I just wanted to show you what it sounded like or make you hear what it sounded like anyway, uh, if I talk through this lavalier microphone into the camera, just to demonstrate that the two and a half millimeter in jack actually works on this one. That's something to get your teeth into. Right, so I've managed to find myself in one of Manchester's uh, smarter areas, nice and quiet, St John's Gardens, down below Deansgate. You can just have a walk around here, again demonstrating that you can talk into the camera without looking too much like a lunatic, although, as you can tell, I'm keeping my voice down a little bit, because even though uh, you can probably talk to yourself in Manchester without getting noticed, I don't really want to get that kind of reputation as the kind of guy that's seen walking around in parks talking to himself. Right, so it's a bit of a test now. I'm walking along, of course, with the uh, condenser microphone plugged in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to unplug it and we'll see what that sounds like. Right, so this is the sound coming out of the camera itself. Probably can't hear me at all through that, or maybe just about, but I'll plug the microphone back in. And now we're back on the condenser lavalier microphone again. So that's the benefit of having a mic in socket on a camera. Obviously, you can be heard above the background noise. The only disadvantage, of course, this one's got a two and a half millimeter socket on it. It'd be much better if it had a three and a half mil. OK, I think I've taken up enough of your time, so let's go through some stuff quickly at the end here. The weight of the camera, 2.75 ounces without the case on, or 78.2 grams. If we stick the case on it, we've got 154 grams, which is equal to 5.4 ounces 
ounces. Now, I'd normally show you the TV out functionality, but there's not much to show. You plug it in the telly and it lets you play back the videos or photos. That's it. There's no live viewfinder or any of that stuff. It's just purely for playback only. Now, in the manual, there's a few things here that show you that you can get some optional accessories like chess mounts and things. I've got no idea how you get hold of those. The specifications are shown on the screen now that are in the manual. If you want to see those, I suggest you pause the video because I'm going to move on to something quickly. The other thing that I want to mention, battery life, 1080p. I got two hours and five minutes out of it. Time lapse, I got two and a half hours out of it. That was at one frame a second. Now, remember, you can power and record the camera at the same time, so you don't need to rely on that battery power. The files are AVI H.264 files, 1080p or 720p60, both about 13 and a half megabits a second, which is variable bit rate. The max file size is four gigabytes, which is restricted by the FAT file format, but the camera doesn't stop recording at four gigs. It just keeps adding four gig files to your card until it's full. The maximum card size is 32 gigabytes. So to sum up, the big positive points for this camera are that Brilliant, clear OLED screen. Easy to see outside as well. The time-lapse video is great fun to play around with. That wrist remote control could be useful. The mic in actually works on this camera and it actually has good instructions. On the negative side, the camera and the case do not have a tripod screw thread on them, which would be very handy and means you wouldn't have to restrict yourself to the non-standard mounting system it comes with, which isn't compatible with anything else. You can't get to the mic in socket when when the camera's inside the case. There's no beep when you start or stop recording, which could come in handy if you're not looking at the camera. The video quality is okay in 1080p, but it's a bit soft in 720, and it's a little bit prone to underexposing scenes. So overall then, a pretty decent action camera, but it's got this one killer feature of this excellent and easy to use time-lapse mode that I just can't stop playing around with. Now, if you want to get hold of this camera or download some clips I've recorded, you can click the links in the video description. But as always, for the moment, thanks for watching.